Welcome, Bomber fans, to this edition of the Essendon Board Podcast. Joining me for this, we have F-Dog and Raskolnikov as we look at some of the current whipping boys at the Essendon Football Club, including why F wants milk with that, Mark Robinson's cult hero in the Mighty Comma, as well as discussing the merit of Jackson in the side. As a note, this was recorded before the Western Bulldogs game. However, due to some issues, the podcast was not able to be uploaded in time. As such, this discussion has been extracted and uploaded. So stay tuned for the next 20 minutes as the whips are unleashed on the Essendon Board podcast. All right, so we'll move on to our special topic this week, and it is whipping boys. Obviously, we have a very much noted Melksham fan in F-Dog with us, so I think we'll start with Melksham. Uh, he's he's an interesting he's an enigma really. We we've, we've seen the be- you know we've seen the potential there and we've seen the best of him, but it's been so smeared with um inconsistencies. I think someone oh I think a few people have described it well when they say for every couple of good things he does, he does something that's absolutely abysmal. And I think that's yeah. a, I think that's a frustration with him, and I think the frustration that comes with Melksham has been not based entirely on him, but his selection, uh, with the faith shown in him. I think he's obviously starting to come really show that uh, why that faith was justified as well lately. He's been fantastic the last few weeks, and it's really good to see. So I guess we'll go straight to UF, and I think. Uh, We'll hear what you want to say about Jake Melksham, why you're such a fan of him. Well, last year I wasn't that big a fan. He, like, he was horrible last year. I'd make no bones about that. This year I think uh, I've seen improvement in its work rate. Uh, he, he's been running harder, he's been tackling harder, and overall he's, uh, yeah, that justified his inclusion early on. Yep, and then I think it was against GWS. He he when um Hawking was made the sub, he got he got the chance to be a tagger on Cullen Ward, and he absolutely demolished him. It Ward was a, a non-factor the whole game, and if uh, Ward was a factor in the first half, I reckon it, we would have uh, uh, it, we could have lost that game. And then he's backed it up in the past few weeks. Like, he got moved on to um, Gap in the second half when Connor failed as a tagger against West Coast and completely shut his run out. And then he tagged. I think he was tagging Hartlett this week against Port Adelaide. So, and that was a... And other than a couple of goals and that really, really great point from Hartlett. He was pretty much another non-factor. And, and I think, yeah, yeah, I think he's improved a lot this year. So, and uh, that in itself justifies his selection. So what do you think he um, best brings to the side? Because you've mentioned that he's done some good tagging jobs in the last few weeks. Um, uh, are we bring what? What's his role in this team? Is it to be an extractor of sorts? Because I don't think it's to, it's definitely not to be an outside midfielder. So, um, are we looking at him being potential uh, potential tagger, or are we just um, making do in the meantime? I think it, I think it can be like Nathan Van Berlo does for uh, Adelaide. Yep. Uh, Van Berlo, when there's an outside runner needed that we need to tag, uh, he always goes to them. But otherwise, he. He, he does a little job on the back flank, on the forward flank, in the midfield, sort of like that. Yep. Or, or going on to the other whipping boy, I think he could be moved forward as a forward tagger on the likes of Hawley or Hearn, etc., etc., uh, instead of Comma, <laughs> playing in some of those defensive roles. Well, he's an interesting proposition because perhaps his best attribute is he's uh, raking. Uh, he's a right footer, isn't he? He's raking right yeah. foot kick. But the problem with that is, is he's just. Well, he's actually he's got the opposite problem of Cal Hooker. Whereas Melksham is an absolutely technically gifted kick, 
his decision making can be horrible. Whereas Kale Hooker, you know, is by no means a great kick, but he knows how to kick within his limitations. And it'd be great. I think Melksham just needs to. He needs time to really get that composure. Yeah, and in the past few weeks, he's um he's been going first option, and that's uh, and uh, that's really improved. Yeah, that's uh, the noticeable difference for many supporters. I yeah, think. I think that's um I'll I'll draw a long bow here, but Melchin is a real well, he's a real fighter in a sense that um. He absolutely um, draws upon that competitive spirit, and he like like a boxer. I guess his decisions are really based adrenaline wise, and you know, very sharp. You know, he's at his best when he's making quick decisions and not sitting there thinking about how am I going to do this or letting the doubt creep in. Yeah, I guess he's like a he's also like a bit he's a bit like McPhee in the sense that. Once he stops and props, you know, it's just going to go to shit. But... Yeah. So he's just one player who needs to really get that confidence in himself and then draw upon the contest. And, you know, he has a lot of potential in him. And I I really hope we see the best of him. And it's good to see him finally be able to really start to contribute as well. So, um, what about you, Roski? What do you think about Malkshan? I was a big critic last year. Yep. I wasn't a really, uh, big enough critic to say, you know, he's the list him or anything, but I just thought there are, last year there was others that should have been getting the game in front of him. Um, but looking back on it, you could see what the coaches were doing. They probably knew that he wasn't up to scratch last year, but they wanted to give him the opportunity to develop in the um, AFL. And I think it's really paid off this year. You can see that um, he's really increased in confidence and just his decision-making and... I think look, um, you know, all the critics have sort of been in silence this year. And even though I'm probably still not a huge fan, I probably still think there are a couple of other players who could be doing just as well or maybe even better. Um, I think he is, at the moment, uh, justifiably in the team. Yeah, I think in the last three or four weeks, he's definitely um, on merit. He's definitely earning his spot. But I think the main... The main concern last year was, as you said, it felt like he was being gifted games. When, yeah. I mean, because he mentioned Kavanaugh earlier, and you look at players like him and all that sort of stuff, and Kavanaugh has been doing, was doing very similar to Melksham in the games he played, but Melksham always sort of retained his spot, and it was similar to other young players as well, where no matter how. Malksham performed, he was still, you know, keeping his spot and there didn't seem to be a consistency, which in turn, I think, just brought about frustration in supporters, so... Yeah, what frustrated me was that others players who came in, they played well for one game and they seemed to get dropped the next game, mm. whereas Malksham played badly every game and was still on the team. I guess, you know, with me along with other, you know, supporters are just really uh, wondering why that was happening, yeah. but... You know, as I said, he's repaid the faith this year. It looks like he's really um, come of age. Yeah, and it's fantastic to see. Um, you mentioned earlier, before, well, we we talked before about uh, Nick Comer, and I think he'll be the second player to talk about. Uh, he's played every game he's been eligible this year from memory, except for when he was suspended. Um, and he seems to be a real favourite of the Royal Box uh, for his for the pressure he brings forward, but... I guess the knock many supporters have on him is that he doesn't provide much in an offensive manner and really all he does bring to the side is that chase and finesse. So I guess I'll start with you, Roski. What do you think of Nick Comer and what do you think he brings to the team? I'm actually a fan. I think, you know, he that's his role in the team is to um, put that pressure on and at, he does well at that. He hasn't got great um, offensive skills, but... If Hurdy wanted um, was wanting to do that and he wasn't doing that, then he would be dropped. Yeah. So Hurdy has him in the team for that role that he's doing, and he's doing a good job at it. Um, he, so um, I think, yeah, he strikes a resemblance to me to um, Puapolo from Hawthorne. Yeah. And I think yeah. it was, and he's one of those players who, if he 
doesn't chase and he doesn't do those one percenters, then he's just not going to be in the team because football ability alone is he's just not in you know the ballpark of some of the other players we have. So it's an interesting equation. Like I think what we need is we need sort of a hybrid between Jetta and Comma. I was just going to say that actually, yeah. Yeah, someone you know who has that sort of, uh, that touch of class and elegance in an offensive matter, but has the fanatical pressure that the comma brings. I think we do in uh, Alwyn Davy. Yeah, he's Alwyn. He's not in the side this week. Alwyn's he, an interesting proposition, isn't he? Because he started out so promising, but it's as if those injuries he sustained over the years and all that sort of stuff. He just. He has this issue where he can't seem to handle the ball cleanly. Ah, cleanly. And if he could, you know, become a one-touch player, he'd be so much more improved than what he is, and he'd be a really, really vital part of this side. Mm. But you know, we've got to. Frustrating that Alan Davy. He he used to be. Um, I don't know where you thought he was, or the other teammates thought he was, but he used to be the main target down forward. Oh, he's he'd a centre half forward, isn't he? To <laughs> get the ball clear. <laughs> goes straight Alan Davy, and it's like he's had he'd have two you know players that hit a lot taller than him on him, and it just he'd crumb it sometimes. But it just seems like we're just wasting it by just using Alan as a target all the time. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. how many times we decide to kick to Alan Davy as a centre half forward. I jokingly made the reference, I think, in the last podcast that uh, you know Joe Danaher would be salivating at the thought of crumbing to Alan Davy. And yeah. it's a bit like that. You just wonder how it happens that Davey gets in such a position where he's used as a marking target. Because I've never seen him take an overhead mark, especially a contested one. So, uh, he's... Yeah, he's an interesting one. It would be good... I think uh, myself and a lot of fans are just clinging on to the fact that we've got to get into 100 games. Because God knows every time I see his kids, I think, oh, God, we need them. You know, because yeah. you can just... Uh, you have that feeling that just one of them is going to turn out to be pretty damn good. So... So how many games is he on now? 96 and 100 to qualify for Father Son, I believe. Yeah. Oh, I think he's on 96 and it's definitely 100 to qualify. So yeah. four more games. So hopefully we can get that into him and then, you know, what happens with Davey happens. But until then... It would be shattering if he ends up on 99 and his kids turn out to be as good as they may be. Yeah. But, I mean, we're clinging to a future hope there, so <laughs> kind of shows the um, mindset of the supporters there. But, anyway, um, yeah, what about you? If, uh, what do you think about Comer and his role in the team? I honestly think yeah, he's in greater pressure. There's no denying that. He runs, he chases, he's fanatical about it. But there's not enough offense. Like, this day and age, a forward should be combined, you know, should be averaging at least one assist a game or one goal a game, and Common does neither. Like, his tackles can set up goals, but... I think I think we should look at Davy. His tackling is just about as good, but he kicks goals. I mean, for me, it's a no-brainer. Davy or Comma, I go Davy every time. Okay, well, I guess on that point, I think we'll bring up another player well as well, who's not so much maligned, but he's. Maybe his continued selection is. Uh, that being Jackson Merritt. Now, I don't think anyone has any doubts about him being a player for the future. Obviously, to what level is debatable. But there's also a bit of debate now that he about his selection and whether it's con- like justified. Not he was. He's not playing appallingly like a Melksham was last year, but. The, again, it's similar to Comma. Is you know, does he bring enough to the team for you know his position in the side? So um, I guess we'll start with you, F. What do you think about Merritt and his position in the team? Uh, um, I think it's important to get gains into him, uh, but I have to question. Like, 
He's get, been given a run. Like, why not get uh, Kavanaugh in, it, play it, play off the half-court flank and go into the midfield a bit? Who's, prob- who's just as good from what I've seen and has that touch of class about him? Yeah. So... Yeah, it's interesting because... Um, I'm a big fan of Merritt. Yeah, because Merritt's Sorry. really come out of nowhere because... Leading into the season, I think it was Nick O'Brien, Alex Brown, and Alia Kavanagh were the big three young players that were being talked about. But um, Merritt's really just, you know, dropped out the sky. Obviously not to the um, team, but um, he's come in and he's been retaining his spot for the most part because he's played, you know, three quarters of the games were played. So I think it's a testament to him that because he was way out of his depth in the um, first game he played against Collingwood last year. Oh, so yeah. I think I think he's being rewarded, if not for anything, but for his um, work ethic as well. So I think while the effort's there, I think it's the same with Connor. While the effort's there, while the chasing's there, and I think Merritt's a lot more classier than Connor as well. Um, I think Merritt will, for the most part, keep his spot. What's happening with uh, El Olio? Dalio. He's an interesting one because he's a rookie and we're allowed a rookie elevation and he has been kicking goals. But this is just, you know, my personal view and I don't know if it reflects the coach's opinion. But um he's uh it seems like he's really limited in that uh you know, he can kick a goal and all that sort of stuff, but that's all he can do. And even still when he's in his with his goal kicking it's more of a lead up sort of style as opposed to a... It's more... I guess he's similar to an Angus Monfries, I guess. Maybe not as prolific in the possessions, but similar style to his goals. So I don't think he's... I don't think he's our answer to so much crumbing goals, but he... I guess he's more of a... He's a merit option, perhaps, but his tackling and his defensive efforts aren't in standard of a comma or a merit... Or even a Davy, yeah. but he is one that, you know, on the ba- um on the back of his VFL performances, does probably deserve a look in sometime soon. So it'll be interesting to see what the uh, Royal Box do in that scenario. Yeah. But um, that's all we have time for this week on the Big Footy Essendon Board podcast. It's been a pleasure, and I'd like to thank F and Roski for coming on. Um, Thanks a lot. Yeah. And- cheers. Hopefully we have an Essendon win this week and with any luck we'll have another podcast up next week as we look back on an Essendon win. And so thank you everyone and see the Bombers fly up. Go Bombers.